most of us, a forest is trees. While trees are perhaps the most dominant and obvious feature of a forest, they're only part of the total environment. A forest includes the interrelationships of living things, plants, animals, and microorganisms. All contribute to the forest community in a variety of ways. is the result of many factors. Soil, plant and animal life, geological history of the area, climate. Most forests require at least 15 inches of annual moisture. This moisture must come at the right time of the year. Most forests require a minimum frost-free growing season of at least three months. Climates vary geographically and so do forests. The kind of forest that a particular place and climate might support is very limited. Where we have one kind of forest, chances are another will not be able to exist. A mature forest may be destroyed, perhaps by fire. Or by disease. or parasites, such as mistletoe, or by wind. The same kind of mature forest may grow again, but it will take many, many years. For each forest passes through a series of successive stages before it reaches its mature climax. Grasses and small flowers may be crowded out by shrubs. Shrubs, in turn, may give way to fast-growing but short-lived trees. These may, for a time, provide shelter for the slower-growing climax species. Because of the great variation in habitats found across North America, there are four times as many different kinds of trees as there are in Europe. There are several major forest regions. From Alaska south down the coast to Northern California, mountains and ocean create a region of high rainfall. This west coast region is one of large coniferous trees, including western hemlock, red cedar, Douglas fir, and redwoods. West coast forests produce one-third of North America's lumber, one-fifth of its wood pulp, and most of its plywood. Inland from the west coast are the forests of the mountain west. These forests are not contiguous, but are like wooded mountain islands surrounded by plains of sagebrush and grass. In most of these forests, the primary mountain conifers are ponderosa pine, lodgepole pine, Engelmann spruce, and blue spruce. The forests of the mountain west produce 20% of our lumber. The southeastern part of the United States is an area of relatively high rainfall. Much of the land is covered with forests. Conifers include longleaf, shortleaf, loblolly, and slash pine. The southern forests account for one-third of our lumber and more than half of our pulpwood. The central forests of the eastern half of the United States consist mostly of deciduous trees, often called hardwoods. They include beech trees, maples, oaks, hickories, and elms. The 
of all color is without parallel. To the north is a land of wet bogs, lakes, and generally poor soil created by the great continental glaciers. Here we find white pine, northern white cedar, eastern hemlock, balsam, and tamarack or larch. For over 250 years, this was the main timber producing region in North America. Still farther to the north are the great stretches of boreal forests across Canada and Alaska. This is the taiga. While these are the main forest regions in North America, there are others. Tropical forests touch the southern tips of Texas and of Florida. In the southwest, there are extensive dwarf forests of pinyon pine and juniper. Also in the southwest are forests of the giant cactus, the saguaro and of Joshua trees, a species of yucca. There are cottonwood and willow forests along the rivers and streams of prairie lands. There are chaparral forests and live oak woodlands. In Hawaii, there are many forests, some with striking giant tree ferns. The forest lands of North America account for about 10% of the world's total. Yet these forests produce more than a third of the world's timber and about three-fourths of the world's plywood. Of the approximate 1,000 species of trees in North America, about 100 species are used commercially. Commercial uses of wood include saw logs and account for 70% of the harvest. Uses include timber, lumber, veneer, and plywood. Products are houses, furniture, boxes, and barrels. Pulpwood accounts for 15% of the harvest. Reduced to fibers and chemical components, pulpwood is used to produce paper, linoleum, rayon, fiberboard, hardboard, insulation, and plastics. Fuel wood accounts for 10% of the harvest. At one time, this figure was higher, and maybe again in the future, as wood is used for heating and cooking. Other uses of wood include handles, poles, piles, posts, railway ties, and excelsior. Our forests provide us with more than wood and timber products. They provide wildlife habitat, a place for animals to live. Forests provide watershed protection. They help stabilize climates. We use our forests for livestock grazing, for mining, and for recreation. In some forests, one use must be primary. In others, several uses can be carried out at the same time. There was a time when, like all of our natural resources, forest trees and other values were free for the taking.